Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, some science... <music> Starting off the news this week, a story that is close to my heart. Hedgehogs. A report released by the People's Trust for Endangered Species and the British Hedgehog Preservation Society called the State of Britain's Hedgehogs 2022 has revealed a sharp drop in hedgehog numbers from the countryside. These rural numbers have been in decline now for decades and the report finds that there could be 30-75% to 75 fewer hedgehogs in Britain's countryside since the start of the century. However, interestingly, there actually seems to have been an increase in the hedgehog population in urban areas. Never before has the differences between rural and urban hedgehog populations been so noticeably stark, and it has been reported that this stabilisation and recovery could well be down to the efforts of the public and local governments in improving their gardens and green spaces for hedgehogs. Moving on now away from that incredibly important story, in other news, a study published in the journal International Journal of General Medicine has seen a collaboration of researchers from Australia, Italy, Poland and Switzerland and has concluded that meat consumption actually increases life expectancy. The team say that they set out to take a wider approach than many previous studies that have concluded that a meat-free diet increases life expectancy and they have used ecological data from the United Nations. The lead author on the study has said that previous studies haven't properly represented the global population or taken into account other lifestyle aspects from non-meat eaters. The study recommends meat consumption in moderation from a health standpoint. It will be interesting to see how this study fits into the wider debate and how it will be used, or not, in the future. And now over to Ben, with quite a lot of news about things you probably care about. Thanks, Doug. Well, first up this week in the paleontology news is the very exciting announcement that yet another new Spinosaur has been named. This new taxon comes from the early Cretaceous of Portugal and has been called Iberospinus natarioi. Interestingly, some of the material that this new dinosaur is based on was actually the material that had previously been referred to Baryonyx walkeri. So the Portuguese Baryonyx that you may have heard about is now in fact the new genus Iberospinus. Although some of this material has therefore been known about for a while, fieldwork in 2020 that returned to the same site uncovered more bones of this individual that now paint a more complete picture of this Spinosaur, and further support its distinction as something new. The phylogenetic analyses run in this study find Iberospinus to be positioned as the sister taxon to the grouping formed by Baryonyx and Suchomimus, and it displays several characters of its bones that led the researchers to consider it as a distinct animal. The neurovascular network of the dentary was also examined, and interestingly parts of the skeleton, namely one of the foot bones and the tail vertebrae, were found to have an intermediate condition between more basal theropods and the spinosaurines. The distinction of this new taxon therefore adds to the diversity of Iberian spinosaurs, with several different endemic taxa now recognised here, and again adds to our ever-changing understanding of these fascinating dinosaurs. Also in the news this week is the naming of a second new dinosaur, this time an Alvarezsaurid from the Gobi Desert. Yeah, another one. Called Ondogervil alifanovi, it's based on a partial postcranial skeleton and dates to the late Cretaceous. Uniquely among Alvarezsaurid theropods, this animal had metatarsals 2 and 4, bones of the foot, that were completely fused together along the area they contacted each other. This feature, along with the anatomy of related Alvarezsaurids, led the authors to suggest that a deep evolutionary divergence between these particular lineages might exist based on the noticeable differences in their foot anatomy. So, another important paper that helps to further refine our understanding of these bizarre dinosaurs. And finally, for this action-packed week of paleontology news, we have the announcement of a remarkable new pterosaur from the Isle of Skye in Scotland. This new taxon, named Yark Skianark from the Scottish Gaelic for winged reptile from Skye, is a beautifully preserved and relatively very complete specimen, being preserved in three dimensions and showing much of the body and skull. It's also very significant for being an absolutely huge pterosaur from this time, with an estimated wingspan of more than two and a half meters. Since it's classified as a Ramphorhynchid and comes from the Middle Jurassic, a large body size is very unusual and has led the paleontologists to rethink what we thought we knew about pterosaur evolution. Until now, pterosaurs from the Triassic and Jurassic were always found to be generally quite small compared to the aeroplane sizes they reached later in the Cretaceous. 
never reaching more than about 1.8 to 1.6 meters in wingspan. But now that the comparatively giant Yark has been found, it shows that pterosaurs were actually more diverse in their body sizes at this time than we'd realized before. Another fascinating result of the study is that this specimen was realized to not even be fully grown at the time of its death, with bone histology indicating that it was only a juvenile or subadult and was still growing fast. So an absolutely brilliant and very exciting discovery for understanding pterosaur evolution, showing that the Middle Jurassic was actually a key interval in the evolution of these animals. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed and, as always, we'll see you on Tuesday.